Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Monored Storm deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck is made possible thanks to a couple new additions in Strixhaven and the Mystical Archives. And one of those is a Grinning Ignis, 3 mana for a 2-2 elemental. And for single red we can return it to our hand and add double colorless and red to our mana pool. So we can potentially replay the Ignis with the mana it generates. And that combines very nicely with Burgi, God of Storytelling from Kaldheim. 3 mana for a 3-3 legendary creature god, and whenever we cast a spell, we can add a red mana to our mana pool, which means that if we have Burgi in play, cast the Grinning Ignis, we get red mana, which we can then use to return the Ignis back to our hand, replay it, pick it back up, and we can infinitely do this until we eventually cast a Grape Shot for lethal damage. Grape Shot, a 2 mana sorcery from the Mystical Archives, deals 1 damage to any target and has Storm. So when we cast this spell, copy it for each spell cast before it this turn and we may choose new targets for the copies so if we generate an infinite storm count with Burgi and Grinning Ignis Grapeshot can deal infinite damage divided as we choose among any number of targets of course that does require us to have a Grapeshot, Burgi and a Grinning Ignis all in our hand which is not always going to happen so we do need some additional redundancy which comes in the form of Hazred's Monument a 3 mana legendary artifact saying a red creature spells we cast cost one generic mana less to cast and whenever we cast a creature spell we may discard a card and if we do draw a card so that gives us access to a ton of additional card selection to help us dig for the missing combo pieces so if we play hazardous monument on turn three on turn four we can play burgi for two mana play grinning ignis for two mana generate a red mana with burgi and then use that to redeploy our ignis over and over and at the same time every time we cast a creature we can discard a card and if we do draw a card so that can dig us towards the missing combo piece which is going to be grape shot to kill the opponent on the spot. Then we also have an additional combo piece to potentially replace Burgi. If instead of Burgi we have a runaway Steamkin, then Steamkin into Hazardous Monument into Grinning Ignis can also generate all the mana necessary to cycle through the deck and eventually kill the opponent with a Grape Shot. So there's a lot of different combinations that lead to the win. Now if we have Burgi, Grinning Ignis and Hazardous Monument in play all at the same time, we're also generating infinite mana with this combo, so we could potentially win with a different win condition, like maybe a Banefire or a Devil's Play, which we can also flash back out of the graveyard, but the reason we're still going with the Grape Shot is that it does allow us to kill if we just have Burgi and Grinning Ignis alongside Grape Shot, which is not the case with something like a Banefire. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we also get to play with Faithless Looting, another card from the Mystical Archives, lets us draw 2 and then discard 2 for just 1 mana. So it is card disadvantage, but it does help us dig pretty deep for all the missing combo pieces, maybe get rid of additional copies of Burgi or Hazardous Monument that we don't need, and then we can also flash it back out of the graveyard to cast it a second time. Then we do have some cheap interaction as well for opposing creature combo decks. Four copies of Frostbite alongside 24 Snow-Covered Mountains to potentially deal 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker. And then two copies of Shock. Then at 2 mana, besides our 4 copies of a Runaway Steamkin, which can get a plus 1 plus 1 counter whenever we cast a red spell, and then we can remove 3 counters to add triple red to our mana pool. We also have 4 copies of Mindstone that potentially helps us ramp and generate more mana to make it easier to combo off, and it also helps us ramp into a turn 3 Chandra Torch of Defiance, which is a final card we haven't covered yet. The powerful 4 mana Planeswalker gives us an alternate win condition, since we can pretty quickly reach the ultimate, which can also potentially act as a win condition if we cast a couple spells and of course can generate mana with the plus one ability can generate card advantage and damage with the other plus one and can deal four damage to an opposing creature with the minus three so protects herself nicely as well and then sometimes we also end up playing Harnfell Horn of Bounty for 5 mana. The legendary artifact lets us discard a card to exile the top 2 cards of our library, and we may play those cards this turn. So that's another powerful card draw engine that can help us assemble the missing combo pieces. And then the mana base, very straightforward, just 24 snow-covered mountains. And then Chandra is not really a necessary part of the deck. If you want to build this deck on a budget, you could potentially go without it, maybe replace it with additional looting effects like Cathartic Reunion or a Thrill of Possibility, and then you can be a bit more combo focused, but Chandra is nice as a plan B in case your combo plan doesn't work out. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Steamkin Ignus Monuments is lethal. 
since that lets us generate all the mana we need. Might need land 4 to make that work. Opponent on the green white and Soul Warden. So the Angel Company deck. Soul Warden does mean that if we go through the Ignis combo, our opponent does generate one life with each iteration, which means Grape Shot wouldn't be lethal. But at some point during the combo, we can just kill the Soul Warden with a Shock or a Frostbite. So is this turn go for Monuments? Heliot Suncrowns, I guess makes things a little trickier and we'll have to kill Soul Warden before it gets too large. Alright, there's Grape Shots. So yeah, if it weren't for Soul Warden we would have the kill here. So instead... So let's say we play Ignis. Pick it back up, add 4 mana. And discard Steamkin. Opponent gets plus 1 counter on Speaker, that's fine. Pick up Ignis, can replay it. Discard Ignis. Then play Steamkin. Decline. Make red mana. Cast Chandra. This can make double reds. Storm counts four. So I guess this is fine. So we kill the Soul Warden, which is what we cared about, and we have a Chandra in play now. And then next turn we should be able to keep comboing. Unless Company finds another Soul Warden. In which case we'll have to Chandra minus. Alright, opponent turns on Heliot, that's fine. Daxos doesn't trigger off our creatures. So we should be fine here. And do we care about Chandra? Not really. So we can let Chandra go, Pwn gains a bunch of life, makes another angel, gains more life. But then next turn we should be able to combo off with double steam King Ignis and find our grape shots number two. Alright, so 29 plus 130 is the number to beat. Alright, let's start storming. Add mana. And just looking for a grape shot number 2. And then once we find it, we can stop drawing cards with the monuments.
can also flash back faithless looting if we want to, to maybe speed up the digging. There we go. Storm count is 34, so that should be lethal. Have to be careful not to click good game, since then I'm going to be targeting myself with grape shot. But good game indeed, opponent. Thanks for sitting through this. On Magic Online, you have a same targets button. That lets you target the same thing over and over with grape shots, but on Arena you'll have to do it manually. But yeah, we were gonna see 34 grape shots to the opponent's face to close out the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got Burgi plus Ignis, so just missing either grape shots or Hazardous Monument. Definitely kills the elf. Another elf. An attempt overgrown tomb. Mindstone to draw, so that sets up turn three Chandra. Which could be nice. And a rotting register, so this is a great henge type situation. So Chandra doesn't deal with Regisaur. So probably no point in playing her. So, go for Burgi, and then play Ignis next turn, could also try and play Horn instead. I think we'll go with Burgi. Put on discards a land. So they probably have collected company in there too. And Gilded Goose. And a Faithless Looting seems excellent, so if we loot into Monuments or Grape Shot we can win. Alright, there's Grape Shot, so that should do it. Play Ignis. And then we can generate an Infinite Storm Count. I assume that if the opponent had removal, they would have used it by now. So just gotta do this 23 more times, because they can still sank the food to gain 3. At least we don't have to sit through the monument triggers to make us draw and discard. So this is a bit simpler. So the only thing that's changing with each iteration is that our storm count goes up. 
and our number next to grape shots increases ever so slightly. If we were playing this in paper, we could establish a loop and then basically say I'm gonna do this 10,000 times and then cast my grape shot. On Arena, sadly, there's no automation, so we have to do it manually. Which is gonna probably cause some angry comments saying that this is a solitaire deck, which, you know, to an extent it is. But that's the only way we can play some of these combo decks on Arena. And at least this deck has a bit of interaction with Frostbite, Chandra, so it can also play a more interactive game if needed. So not sure what the opponent's keeping up here other than their food activation. It would be funny if they had a Weather the Storm in hand. That's a green storm card that gains 3 life, because that's a pretty nice counter to a Grape Shot, since Storm Count also takes into account the opponent's spells that they've cast. So we're at 20 Storm Counts. Just need to make it a little bit higher. Could technically make it up to like 30 or 40 to kill their creatures as well in case something goes wrong. Don't think they'll have any other instant speed life gain, so 23 should be enough. Opponent sacrifices the food. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Lurus of the Dream Den, and our hand looks pretty good. We've got Bergy Ignis, just missing Monument or Grape Shot. Turn to Steamkin or Mindstone. Not sure yet. Opponents with a Watery Grave into Slither Blade, so this might be some sort of blue black rogues deck. We did find monuments. I think we still steamkin here over Mindstone. Although I suppose we do need a fourth mana source. I guess Mindstone is fine. This way we're guaranteed to go monument into Burgi plus Ignis. Enforcer. That's fine as long as they don't have any counter spells or hand disruption. We'll be happy. And now we can Monument plus Frostbite. Could also play the Steamkin as a distraction. Probably nothing I need to Frostbite right now. If they mill my two copies of Grape Shot, I guess I'm in trouble. But other than that, we should be fine. Take one. Alright. We'll uh, play Burgi. And then I guess we'll decline on the Frostbite for now. See if they have a response to Ignis. And then I can still decline and then just discard it when we pick up Ignis again. 
Right, they don't seem to have a response. So now we'll start looting. Can also add mana with a steamkin for what it's worth. Right, there's a grape shot, so don't need to worry about the opponent milling it. Technically, my opponent could have the three mana counter spell that counters everything on the stack, except if we pay a certain amount of mana, so we should technically make infinite mana before casting the Grape Shot, but that would be a bit of a waste of time. Test of talents to counter, that's fine. Still get 20 storm copies. So our opponent was waiting for us to cast some burn spell that they could counter with test of talents. Although Banefire is uncounterable if we cast it for enough. So if that was our weapon of choice, it also wouldn't have worked. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Missing Grinning Ignis plus Monument potentially, or Grape Shot. Facing Soulscar Mage out of a Black Red Lurus deck. Do I want a Faithless Looting? I don't think I do just yet. For opponents packing discard spells, it's better to wait, I think. Another Burgi. Playing a creature and having it killed feels pretty bad, so we'll go Mindstone. And then next turn I can potentially run out Chandra. Alright, Thoughtseize. Might have to take Chandra now. So, nice distraction. So the card we're hoping to draw is Hazard's Monument. Arcanist means they'll get to flashback Thoughtseize. Although, let's see. Yeah, they're likely holding some burn spells as well. Do want to get a Burgi in play, although we do have a backup if they Thoughtseize it. I could go Steamkin, Looting... If we find a Frostbite, I can kill the Arcanist as well. I guess Burgi also just blocks reasonably well if they don't kill her. Although if they then kill Burgi and Thoughts is the other, we're going to be sad. So, interesting decision. I don't think I go Burgi plus looting. So we'll just go Burgi and pass. So 
So, no attack from Arcanists and another young Paramancer. Alright, so we could combo off here. Could play Horn as well. Got a lot of options. If I play Horn, I'm pretty likely to be able to combo next turn if Burgi survives. So, let's do that. And then I'm not going to loot. Better to keep cards in hand to use Horn next turn. Ooh, heroic reinforcements. Does that kill me? That was unexpected. Wouldn't replace Thoughtseize now. Yeah, I think we're dead. Alright. Was not expecting heroic reinforcements here, but that does it. Can block. Soul Scar Mage still takes 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, lethal, so. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got Ignus plus Monument, so just missing Steamkin or Burgi. Facing Ifner Deadlands, so it could be a colorless ramp deck. One monument can go, and a mountain. Yep, so what we don't want to see is maybe Karnath the Grey Crater, since that stops my Mind Stone. Other than that, they shouldn't have too much in the way of interaction. So kind of like playing Chandra to give us more mana for next turn. Could also go Monument plus Looting, and then if we find Burgi, we're off to the races. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable too. So we'll loot first. Steamkin does it too. So discard Lance and Chandra. Play Monuments. And then next turn we should be able to combo off. Monument is fine. Play Steamkin. Loot away a land. Play Ignis. Loot away a land. Pick it back up. Then we can replay it. We will actually need to play a land, so we have exactly enough cards to work with to find Grape Shots for the win. Because now we can start using the Steamkin. Alright, so not too bad here.
All right, we're on the draw, and all right, it's okay. Lots of interaction with Shock and Frostbite, looting to find the missing pieces, and then Ignis to combo with either Burgi or some of our other cards like Steamkin. Opponent on the Mizzix Mastery deck, put some missions in the graveyard. So, probably not going to need Frostbite and Shock, so we can loot those away. There's Monuments. So we're just trying to combo as quickly as possible before the opponent does the same. Turn to Mindstone, turn three Monuments. Could also play Chandra, I suppose. Thrilling Discovery. Discard two, draw three. So your opponent needs the 4-mana sorcery that lets them cast something out of the graveyard, basically. Another looting. Plenty of powerful cards in the graveyard waiting for them. And a cathartic. So there's also some burial rites to potentially flashback, although there's no Sphinx to reanimate. I guess Chandra for the mana ability seems nice. For now, just deal two. Oh, this is gonna hurt. All right, opponents flashes back looting, so they don't have the card they needed here to go off. So that opens up the window for us to combo. There's the Sphinx, so next turn they can reanimate it with Burial Rites and take it from there. So we're gonna play Monuments, we're gonna play Ignis, and then we need to find Burgi pretty much. Play Ignis. Add mana. Yep. You're going down. Lands not great. All right, so it doesn't look like we're going to get to combo sadly this turn. So now our opponent's got the chance to play the scholar and combo off. So Eerie Ultimatum gets back omniscience, among other things. A couple lanes. Harness Infinity lets them draw their entire graveyard. And they can cast all those spells for free, take an extra turn with time warp for starters. And keep digging. So we're probably dead here. Safe to assume. Had a window to draw Burgi or Steamkin maybe would have done it too. Opponent's gonna cycle through their deck, try and find more time warps to chain together. Anything interesting in the graveyard? Couple and burial rites. Another time warp. Scholar goes face. So they still haven't shown the build around card of the deck. More time warps in the graveyard. Another discovery. Thirteen cards left. They're almost gonna deck here. 
Although maybe they have another Harness Infinity. Cathartic. Nine cards left. Time Warp for an extra turn. So I think they still have an extra turn lined up. Scholar gets back Time Warp, so that'll do too. So, maybe they're not even playing the 4-mana sorcery I was talking about. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a relatively controlling hand, but seems fine. Frostbite into Mindstone into turn 3 Chandra and then Monuments to eventually enable the combo. If we don't need Frostbind, we can loot it away. Opponent on blue-black, maybe a control deck. Sultai. And Thoughtseize can take Chandra, I'm sure. Leaving us with Monuments, looting Frostbind land. Could looting now, I could wait a turn. If they do have a Maelstrom Pulse for Monuments, then I might want a second one and I don't want to discard it. But if we looting and get lucky, we could win next turn. Alright, we got pretty lucky. So Frostbite goes and land goes. And then we can play Monuments. We've got Ignis. So we're just missing Steamkin or Burgi. Narset. Narset is rough since that prevents us from looting with a monument or with a faithless looting. So we'll have to pressure Narset with our Ignis. A little sad that I got rid of my Frostbite now, I suppose. Well, there's Frostbite. That helps. Discard looting. And there's Bergy. Well, next turn we can win the game, assuming they don't interact. Languish kills Ignis, unfortunately. Well, we'll play Bergy here. Could also go for Horn. To have something a bit more permanent in play that doesn't die to creature removal. Do I want to play the lands? Maybe not. Alright, we drew a looting. So I'm just gonna pass. Don't want to cast this and discard the two cards I draw. So next turn we can go looking for Ignis. One is gonna grow spiral to ramp into their ultimatum. And another Narsa, at least we can attack her with Burgi. So they might keep her at 5 loyalty. And then next turn they can cast ultimatum, assuming they have a land. Could sacrifice Mindstone, probably not very helpful unless we find Shock or Frostbite. Yeah, I guess we do that. We can play Chandra. Deal two to them. Attack Narset. But if they get to ultimatum, we're probably going to be in trouble. Alright, no seventh land, so they have to cultivate. So there's a realistic chance we can still combo here. 
but it has to happen next turn. Spiral. And thought sea sticks my looting. So we'll start by killing Narsets. And then I might need Chandra for mana, so maybe start by flashing back Faithless looting. There's Ignis. The problem is I won't have a card left in hand to keep and then kill the opponent with Grape Shots. So while I can make Infinite Storm, I guess I won't quite get to combo off. So what does that mean? I guess I need to hit Ignus with Chandros. First plus one ability. So we don't have any knowledge about our deck. Otherwise I could make Infinite Storm with Ignus in hand and then plus Chandra to cast a lethal grape shot. But I won't know the location of my grape shot, so we're kind of flipping a card at random off the top of our deck. So I have two grape shots and I have two grinning Ignis in my deck, so we have an equal chance of flipping grape shot and Ignis. So I guess we're just gonna Ignis here. And then hope that Chandra reveals a grape shot. Now I don't have a way to keep track of my storm count, but our opponent's at 10, so we don't need a very high storm count. So that should be enough. Wow, grape shots off the top. Can't believe it. Opponent must be speechless right now, and so am I, to be honest. That was a lucky sequence, and yeah, we beat a lot of disruption here. Double Thought Seas, Narset, times two, and a Languish to kill our Grinning Ignis, so the deck is resilient, and that game also showcased the versatility of Chandra, giving us an alternate angle of attack. So yeah, overall this Mono Red Storm deck might not be the most arena-friendly deck to play since it takes a lot of clicking to go through the motions, but it is a pretty consistent deck that can kill around turn 4, turn 5 if it doesn't get disrupted too much. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.